camping during the fall season is an extraordinary experience. Yes, the days are shorter and the weather can be unpredictable, often dipping below zero overnight. But the park is quieter and undeniably more peaceful than the busy summer months. The bugs are practically non-existent. And if you time your trip just right, you'll get to camp during peak fall colors and experience some of the most beautiful scenery that the park has to offer. During the 2021 fall season, I decided to set up base camp on Head Lake for a few nights. I day tripped into the nearby Kenneth Lake and hiked to the top of the Track and Tower Trail. And the moose? Well, that experience just took my breath away. get onto Highway 60. Just to close my eyes for two minutes. I'm going from Cache into Head Lake. Just one portage, 1.6 kilometers that I'm going to double carry. And I'm going to base camp there for a few nights and paddle around Head. Enjoy the fall colors. Probably going to Kenneth and maybe harness the adjacent lakes on off days. Um, the goal is to do a few hikes the track and tower trail to sky mount and maybe the lookout trail just a couple hundred meters in front of me or to my right so I'm just having a quick snack break on the bar give it a few minutes to digest before I start the actual portage Just finished my first carry of the 1.6k portage into head. My first carry was with my canoe, my barrel, and my camera gear, minus the GoPro, which is what I'm using right now. My second carry is with my day pack on my stomach, my main pack on my back, paddle. And I've got my Nalgene and life jacket attached to my day pack. I don't know if you can see. All right. I just need to stop and admire this view. I'm right in the middle of the portage from cache to head and it feels like every 50 meters, I just want to stop and <laughs> look at the trees and the leaves are falling slowly, blowing in the wind. Just a nice crisp breeze, fresh smell of the air not sweating while portaging, zero bugs. All right, am I selling you guys on fall camping yet? I'm at the campsite. I haven't even set up camp. I have all my gear just sitting right there. I decided just to process a little bit of firewood first. I'll show you the wood pile so far. So this is what I've done so far. It's not a ton, but it's a good amount. And we'll keep the fire going for a little while. And while we're here, I've never seen this before at a campsite. This grill is impaled into the fire pit, so it swings around when you want to use it, and it swings out 
when you want to have a fire. So this is where I decided to pitch my tent. There's a handful of good spots. Um, I like this. It's quite sloped all around, but uh, there's enough space for me to sleep comfortably, which is all that I need. So then there's this big spot, and this is probably where most people would choose to pitch their tent. You can pitch a couple tents here if you wanted. Path to the Thunderbox. A couple other paths that just lead back. The site's very open and like trail -y behind the site. You can just walk and explore. Um, this is the fire pit seating, which you saw in an earlier video. And that's the site. It's a really nice site. It's a great summer site. Not the best for the wind that I have right now because of how exposed it is. But like, you just can't beat that view. Lost my GoPro on that. Okay, I'm back at the campsite. It is six thirty, starting to get dark out. It has been gray all day. This is the sunniest it's been. And I forget how many hours of sun it called for, but I think it was like five or six. And I think I got five or six minutes, maybe. Not hours, that's for sure. Um, yeah, it's been just overcast all day, windy. Um, those two things together make it very cold. I'm gonna make a fire and just sit by the fire for a little while. So this is what I'm going to use tomorrow, this is today, and hopefully left over for tomorrow morning as well. Just some small pieces, some processed bigger pieces, and all this stuff I'll process tomorrow. And yeah, just sit by the fire for a little bit, have a nice night, try and go to bed early. Two right now. 
It is 8.17. I think it's the latest I've ever stayed in the tent. It is way too cold. The tent and my sleeping bag is way too comfy. It's, I think, 3 degrees outside right now. Um, and yeah, in here, I'll give you a little tent tour. So I got little socks, long underwear, sweatpants. Here I've got a merino, merino wool long sleeve. And then just a cotton sweatshirt on top, toque. That's it. My sleeping bag, which is very, very old. That's a hand-me-down from my father. The tags are long worn out. Um, I don't know what the actual rating is for temperature, but I've used it in, I think the coldest is minus five, and it's fine, like when I'm wearing these layers. Everything in the sleeping bag is fine. Everything outside of the sleeping bag is freezing. Um, I brought a full-on pillow, because why not? Um, my sleeping pad. So I bring my camera gear. I bring my day pack, which I can show you what's inside the day pack after. Nalgene. This is just my dry sack with my clothes. Um, my new jacket. Stylish from Uniqlo. Um, bear spray. Phone and headphones. Up top is headlamp. This is just for my headphones and sleeping pad. Um, this is my bag of goodies. And I just wrapped it in my shirt to try and give it a tiny bit of insulation and keep it off the ground, put it on my dry sack. Um, just because all batteries and electronics, which in this temperature, try and keep them warm if possible. So here's a few extra camera batteries for my DSLR, a couple power banks, a big fat power bank, some charging cables, um, charger for camera batteries, charger for GoPro batteries, and then just my notebook with some pens. So this is just the kind of important bag that I keep um, near the top of my pack when I pack, and when I get to camp, it goes in the tent, just so it stays clean, waterproof, accessible. And then my day pack, usually quite simple. In summer months, I'll squeeze in bug spray and sunscreen, but at this time of year, it's not needed. So I've got my rain jacket on one side, and then on this side, I have two Pelican cases. The first Pelican case is my quick access electronics because I don't always have that easily accessible. So on this, I've got uh, got wire for USB-C, wire for my um, phone, some extra um, memory cards, SD cards, two quick access power banks, one battery for my DSLR, and then GoPro batteries. And just to make life easier, I put a sticky note that says empty when it's empty, because when I have five batteries lying around and they're all beside each other and I want to swap one out, I don't want to have to cycle through all four of them to figure out which one is the one that still has juice left. So, just st stick it on, and that means they're empty. And then I just take it off and put it back here once I charge them. And then I've got my second Pelican, which is just my inReach and my car keys. So, pretty simple. In this zippered pocket, I've got a mini first aid kit and a sewing kit. Sewing kit in case I've just got for a bit of emergency I need to stitch myself up or something. Um, but first aid kit has just got some bandages, um, Advil, Pepto, just some quick things like that. And then in the two front pockets here I keep toilet paper in case duty calls. And in this pocket I keep lighter and aqua tabs, a backup um, map of my route, and that's it. That's my day pack. This pretty much stays with me everywhere I go. It has my inReach, it has my electronics to change batteries. So my day pack and my bear spray I pretty much keep with me no matter what. And then my camera gear. 
it's even more simple. I've got, I keep my camera right at the top, so easy to grab in and out when I'm in the canoe and I see a moosey or something. I've got my spare lens beneath. So right now I have my Sigma 17 to 50 2.8 lens on. And then this is my telephoto 55 to 250 Canon IS STM. Normally that one actually stays on the camera most of the time. And then in this front pocket, I just got a garbage bag or two in case it starts to rain, just to waterproof it quickly. And intervalometer for night sky time lapses. And just a few brushes to clean the lenses if needed. I've never needed to use them out in the backcountry, but just in case. That's my camera gear. Okay, I'm doing the 290 meter from Head to Kenneth, which starts with a pretty rocky uphill. Here we are on Kenneth Lake. Let's check out the first campsite, the one that's attached to the portage. Kenneth Lake has very few maples trees. There's like one patch in front of me that you can't see, or two patches of color. And the rest of the lake is pretty green, as you can see behind me and to the sides. So happy I'm not camping here. The view from my campsite on head is just like stellar, 10 out of 10. La la, here we go. Top of the world, top of tennis. Ooh, the news in the distance. Thank you. 
So I have a pretty good amount of firewood processed already, but I'm going to do just a little bit more. Just that I really don't feel like I need to be conservative with my wood. I'm going to have a fire going for a little bit tonight, and then tomorrow morning as well. While I pack up, I'll have a fire going. So this is what I just did. This half right here I just did. This is what I have from before. So it's a pretty decent bit. It's got some depth to it there. What a difference it makes sitting beside a warm fire on a cold fall evening. Also, what a difference it makes holding my DSLR instead of a GoPro. <laughs> it's so much heavier in the hand. It's okay, I'm not going to talk for long. Bye. I'm very much enjoying the uh, campsite in fall colors. Sorry, I'm just staring at the colors of them, trying to put together a sentence. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous view. The whole lake is very pretty, Head Lake, and I went and I looked at every other campsite and they all have very, very nice views, but I think this one has the best view. Morning of day three right now. 
it's 7 a.m. I just got out of the tent a little bit ago. I'm currently filming two time lapses. One with my GoPro. Sorry, it's my DSLR. One with my DSLR. Because that's just a spectacular view. And one with my GoPro. So I'm just tearing down camp now. I'm gonna take my tarp down first, then I'll grab my barrel down and make myself something to eat and drink. And then I'm gonna do the tent last, because there's a good chance I'm gonna to wanna to get back in my sleeping bag and take a little nap before actually heading out. So I wanna save that for last. And once the tent is packed up, then I pack my pack and get on the water. So I'm gonna go enjoy the sunrise. And we'll pack up camp and I'll see you later. Gear organized, barrel on, yoke on. I heard something walking in the forest. I went to take a look. Thought maybe it'd be a moose, but I didn't see anything. So, time to get going. Sometimes when you don't have your tripod with you, you just gotta get a little bit creative. Like this. And you just hope that it doesn't 
go tumbling down. Because it's a nice view. That's what the camera sees. Continuing behind schedule, but I really have no nowhere to be at any specific time, so behind schedule is okay. And that is a nice picture that I need to take. Well, I don't have my telephoto on. I'm just about finished the hike. About to get to the lookout. And I'm gonna have the camera rolling as I get there. I can see the opening. So I'm very close. And the hike was very, very busy. So we'll see how jam-packed it is at the lookout. How's the view? Am I in, am I in the frame? You, you are in the frame. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> Tilted? Look, yeah, now it's better. You're... Well, that was busy, but still very much worth it. Despite it being very busy, it doesn't take away from the view. You just hear the chit chatter behind you, and you just have to wait your turn to get to the best spots. And at least the plus side is you get to make friends with people and get them to take pictures of you, which is what I did. You take some pictures of them, they take some pictures of you, and everyone's a happy camper. Literally.
I finished my trip, pulled up to the landing at Cache Lake in the parking lot, and I'm just, you know, casually getting to my car and bringing some gear, and I see a couple people standing at the shoreline, because there's a body of water, not Cache Lake, but just to the side, and I see moose. So there's a calf, a cow, and I didn't see until after that there was also a bull, so a nice little family. And there was maybe like 40, 50 people standing at the shoreline just taking photos. Um, this is the most dangerous time of the year to be near moose. It's rutting season and a bull moose will charge you and be very aggressive. But people didn't care. People were realistically seven, eight, maybe nine feet away, like within arm's reach, basically, the moose. And I'm more surprised that the moose didn't care. Like the bull moose was just sitting there eating in the water. They ended up coming into the parking lot and once the bull lost sight of the calf and cow, the bull started to charge. It, they all ran right in between my car and the car beside mine. So I was worried that it was just gonna charge right into my car. Like it was, it brushed up against my car. Um, luckily no damage was done other than damage that was already there. Um, it was funny, the people that were parked beside me, they went to check their car and I said, yeah, but look what happened to my car. And I showed them the damage that was already there. And the mother gasped, the husband laughed. He knew that I was just joking that it was already there, um, but she didn't. So that was pretty funny. Yeah, that was exciting to say the least. I want to pause for a minute here. The clip you just watched describes a moose encounter, which you're about to see coming up. But when I was in my car talking about what had happened, I had a lot of adrenaline running through me and I didn't do a great job of describing just how dangerous of a situation it was. People were way, way too close to the moose. My footage was taken using a telephoto lens, or in other words, a zoom lens. I also shoot in 4K resolution, meaning I can crop in really close when editing. This makes it look like I was much closer to the moose than I actually was. Even though I kept my distance, there were just so many people there, many of which came way too close, and the moose became very noticeably stressed. The last clip shows the moose walking through the parking lot with the bull moose charging almost straight into my car. You can see my camera shaking as I move away from my car to the other end of the parking lot. Many people still didn't realize how dangerous the situation was and didn't attempt to move away. I'm honestly very surprised that no one got hurt that day. Please always remember to keep a safe distance from wildlife, especially moose during their rutting season. Thank you. 